This is the lecture for the Art 159 Graphic Design Layout class and the Magazine Project lecture in regards to layout. So in this lecture, we're going to look at the interior of the Magazine Project and the two interior spreads that we are working on for this project. And before we get going, I, it's important to review the uh, original four principles of design that we discussed in the beginning of this course. The uh, crap principles, so contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. These are all going to play a really important role within different aspects of your design layout. And we can kind of use this as a cheat sheet here, looking at the contrast, whether it be in color, tone or value, size and shape and direction. And of course, we can expand on that within the uh, typography treatments and the imagery as well, and how we could contrast those values and texture and so on and so forth to create a further hierarchy, further dimension and space within our pieces. Using repetition within the different design elements that you're using, the typography, so on and so forth to make it feel like a cohesive article. The alignment of the different elements within the grid and then the proximity of those elements and how they are relating to one another and the information and how it relates to the article itself. So make sure to go back to these principles of design that we discussed in the beginning of the semester and reference each one of these as you are working through those interior spreads. Now, as we work through these interior spreads, there is some terminology that we should start to familiarize ourselves with uh, in regards to magazines and publications and uh, these correspond with uh, terminology that is also used within the print production of different design assets. So to begin, we have the uh, the, um, the headline here within the space. So this is going to be the largest area of text, and this is going to typically introduce what the article or what the content of that design is going to be. And first and most important, the element on the page uh, with in regards to the headline, you want to make sure that the reader really opens that page and or that magazine or whatever that layout may be. And the headline really catches the viewer's attention. So after they've caught the viewer's attention, then your idea is kind of lure them into reading the article. And typically this will go from the top of the page um, where there will be the start of your read and it's going to be larger than other elements on your page as well. Next we have the intro. Uh, another word for this can be a uh, kicker or a deck sometimes we refer to that. And this is going to be a sort of um, area that is slightly smaller than the headline but also slightly larger than the body copy giving you maybe a paragraph or a couple sentences to introduce you to the article. Again, luring you in to uh, read a little bit more after gaining the viewer's attention with the headline. This sort of intro or kicker acts as a sort of bridge between the headline and the body copy, and it sets the tone of whatever that material e is and briefly describes what you can start to expect from the rest of the content here. So your intro text should summarize the overall article or story and again try to attract the reader's attention. Now from the design point of view, the intro should be set in a slightly bigger type size than the body copy, but in a much smaller size than the headline. And you can also make it in a different type style if you would like as well to set it apart from the headline. You should place the intro text just below the headline typically, so they're going to work together as a team. The headline draws the reader's attention, gets them curious, and the intro text sort of solves that curiosity by giving them a little bit more information about that content. And that's why they should really work together. And then we have our body copy, and this is going to be the bulk of the text within the article. Now the size of your body copy should be consistent throughout the entire magazine. So once you have decided on what's going to work within the formatting of your body copy, you should be using a paragraph style within InDesign so that that stays consistent and you can make global changes within the space as well. So the headline should change according to the importance of the article and the intro size can vary also, but your body copy should again stay the same no matter what. And this is why it's important to experiment with different type sizes that fit the different column widths potentially 
And as I mentioned, this is done in the first stages of your template creation. And you should spend some time on the formatting of this working through your body copy until you get it right, since it will be used uh, quite a bit within the entirety of the article. And you as a designer should use the grid and the columns within the space, as well as your type choices to reflect the identity of whatever that article may be or whatever that brand may be to present the story in the best way that suits that content. Now, outside of those three elements, we also have pull quotes, and these are going to be the areas that we will see here in this particular case with the large quotation marks. Now, pull quotes serve as a really strong tool to break up big blocks of text or body copy, and it gives a, a little bit more of an interesting look to the article. So your pull quote should be set in a big enough size that it reads and pulls the reader's attention, but that the size should not be so large as, say, the headline. And you can emphasize these pull quotes with some sort of frame or decorative element. Sometimes you could put it in a particular shape and you can place that inside some sort of exaggerated quotations like we can see here. Or you could potentially play with those a little bit further, stretching them across several different columns or breaking the body copy up within the space. Now, within our body copy and our article, we'll also notice that we have these subheaders that are breaking up the body copy. Now the subheaders are used for just that, breaking up the body copy and really giving some clear insight into what the reader can expect within the next few paragraphs there. Below any sort of images, typically you're going to find some sort of image caption and that can either sit within the window of the image or potentially outside of the window of the image. And these are parts of text that should work with the image that it relates to. Image and image captions should work as a unit. So images should be placed again on top of the page where their captions should be placed either below or within them to identify what that image is and how it relates to the article. Now the type size should be at, uh, as big as the body copy or around that size, and it can even be smaller at, for a point or two as well. You can set this as a different style. Oftentimes they'll use condensed typefaces for the treatment of that uh, caption to be able to fit more words into a smaller area of space and potentially fit it into a smaller column as well. Then over here on the right hand side we have our bylines and credits and this treatment is of these different elements is really determined by the importance of the author and the photographers that worked on that particular content um, and it really depends on uh, what the uh, overall um, individuals that are working on this content would include and how you would give them credit for that. Then we also have our running header and that's going to be up at the top here. And the running header is going to be a navigational element that's intended to kind of guide the reader through the content. Typically those are going to be set in brighter colored boxes. Maybe they bleed off of the page like they are doing here. And they're carefully designed to reflect the style and the tone of the magazine as well. Now the bottom left here, we have the folio, which will include the name of the magazine and the page number, typically. This is going to sit within the margins of the content, so not within your live area, but outside of the actual grid, so to speak, or within outside of the live area, I should say, or, the mar or within those margins, so that you can have that be consistent on every page. Since it's outside of the live area, you know that your body copy is not going to be placed within that, so you know that's a good place that to put something that is going to belong on every page and typically be changing throughout as well. So looking at our grid here, you want to make sure that you are utilizing a grid, uh, at least with vertical columns within the space, and that you're placing that content accordingly. So we've gone over the use of grids and how we can apply text within those grids. Now we're going to put that into uh, a real life application here. So we can see that this sort of breakdown here of the uh, anatomy of a grid. And just to review this, we have our columns that are going to be the vertical elements within the space. We have our rows, which are going to be the horizontal uh, areas within the space. All of this is going to include the live area or where your information is going to be placed. And outside of that, we have our margins. This is intended to be left blank or include things like the folio or a running footer that can be placed on page to page because the content will not be within that area. 
Now, in between your rows and your gutter, or excuse me, your rows and your columns, we have our gutters. This is going to be an area that's going to separate the content if you are using different modules. If you are starting to group the modules, here we can see a module that is defined by a single column and a row. That is an individual module, but we can also start to group those modules together to create these spatial zones. And these would be areas where you might place a larger photo or potentially some body copy within the space. So within a grid, there's obviously a lot of ways that we can use this. Now looking at the grid here, we see the exact same information except one image is not being shown on the right hand side that is on the left, but they're using the same grid and just placing that differently. Whether they're using single modules for the images here or a larger spatial zone on the right hand side. On the left here, we can see that they are using a spatial zone for a large body of text, where on the right, we can see they are dividing that between two different columns, where they're grouping four modules here on the left column and grouping four modules here on the right column and that is being separated by the gutter. And each one of our caption areas down here is also being placed with an individual module. So make sure that you are aligning your content to that grid once that is defined. There are some cases where you might wanna break the grid as well. You know, the grid is just there to help you as a designer. And we can see that most of the time we're going to adhere to that grid for the bulk of our information, but there are opportunities to break that grid. And really that comes down to balance and the visual sort of representation of whatever that content may be. So do your best to make those decisions as needed. Now, as you're working on the interior spread, it's really important to consider the hierarchy. In design, the hierarchy creates that visual organization to a design. It gives the reader an idea of where to begin and where to finish reading. And each element that is part of the design can be given a ranking of priority. So when we are working on our covers, obviously we are going to be looking at the hierarchy with typically the name of the magazine being largest, and then the supporting articles uh, having their own set of typographic hierarchy, where it's the title of the article and maybe some information about that. The same sort of thing applies for our interior spreads. You should have multiple levels of hierarchy. Typically you're going to have the headline, the intro, your body copy and your subheaders. Those are going to be four uh, potential uh, typographic hierarchy elements. You might also have captions, your folios, any running headers or footers within the space. These can all be opportunities for different levels of hierarchy. And again, you can go in and prioritize ahead of time what you want people to look at first, second, third, and fourth, and start to make those design decisions based on that criteria. Spacing is also a really vital part of designer's toolkit. Don't be afraid to use white space within your design. Remember, this gives your design breathing room. It increases that visual impact and it can balance out heavier elements and sometimes even emphasize other images or messages that the viewer should remember. So without enough space, a design can risk becoming too visually cluttered for the audience to understand. I would highly recommend as you get into your interior spreads, Trying to leave several modules within your grid open with no content at all. Organizing the information outside of those particular modules within individual pages so that you do have breathing room and you have white space so that your content can breathe. Now, as you are looking at your two spreads, remember that we are viewing this as a magazine article. So the first spread should be the introduction of what that magazine article is. There should be some sort of larger headline, potentially some sort of illustration or larger image to introduce what that is going to be. That could also include your intro or your deck. Then when you get into your, uh, your actual content, think about how you are going to segue the individual into that content. So oftentimes we refer to these as entry points within design. Over here on the right hand side, we can see this large capital F which acts as a drop cap for the body copy that is being seen. And it ties into the illustrated quality on the left spread as well. But this creates a really nice entry point for the reader to start the article. And again, we can see the subheaders within the body copy as well to give the information a little bit of details and break up that heavy area of body copy. So for this project, I would suggest using four columns on each page, a total of eight columns within your spread. This is a good number because it creates some versatility within the space where you can use multiple columns 
in different spatial zones, and you can also limit those to different modules if you decide to add rows within the space as well. Make sure that your text and your images are placed within those particular um, elements of the grid and are using the uh, modules and avoiding the gutters unless they are going all the way through those gutters into the next module. So your text can be laid out in two, two wide or blocks to have them span multiple columns. And oftentimes you can leave the fourth one for images or some sort of pull quote or potentially leaving it blank for that white space to be introduced into the content as well. Now here we can see an absence of white space, but what we can see is some versatility within the hierarchy being used within these grids. So whether you're creating four different columns or you are spanning those columns to create different spatial zones, breaking those up with images. When we look at the, cop the, in the information on the left-hand page here, it seems very dense and it seems hard to create this entry point within the space. On the right, it starts to break that up a little bit and make it easier to navigate as a reader. So as you're choosing your typography for this, it really helps the viewer to know how that relationship is going to correspond for the information that's going to be presented within that article. So the choice of your typography is really important. Not only is it going to organize the elements, but it's going to communicate the information effectively and in the right order while also creating that visual impact. So I would suggest starting with six levels of typographic hierarchy to organize your design and then add as needed. With in InDesign, you can use paragraph and character styles, and you can use different text boxes to complete this. This is a great example of six different typographic hierarchies that you can use within your own space. So here we see the headline at the top that is being shown in Gotham bold in all capitals. Below that, we can see the intro or the sub or the up, well, let's call that the intro here, where we see the um, uh, Gotham book being shown, slightly smaller. It's also being shown in a, uh, a less bold typeface there, and it has lowercase and uppercase letters. Then we look at the body text and the body subheader. These are typically going to be very close in size, but, size, but the body subheader might be slightly bolder or slightly larger to differentiate that. Then below that, we have the pull quote, which again is using a different typeface here to separate it from the other content. And then going into the caption, as I said before, this is a good place to use either a condensed or narrow typeface to be able to fit more words into a smaller space. So you can see this sort of visual level of hierarchy here, right? The headline is the largest, the intro or is going to be the second largest, then you're going to have your body and subheaders that are going to work together, subheaders being, or the body subheaders being slightly larger. Your pull quote might be differentiated slightly and a little larger than your body copy, but not as large as your intro or your headline. And then your caption is going to be some of the smallest text within the page. So as you are thinking about these different styles, make sure to consider fonts or typefaces that are going to work within the content and span the use of these several levels of hierarchy. So make sure to choose a typeface that is simple and will work in large areas of text or body copy along with those headlines and subheaders and has multiple styles within that, whether it is condensed, extended, bold, italic, so on. If you choose a typeface that does not have a lot of styles, you're going to make your job a lot harder to create that typographic hierarchy because you don't have as many options to choose from to differentiate those elements. The font that you use for your body copy in your print or in your web project should be unobtrusive as well. Save the more decorative typefaces for those larger areas of text, such as your headlines or the other elements requiring emphasis. Many, so many fonts are going to be suitable for body copy, but again, keep it simple for that area so that it's easy for individuals to read when there is a large area of copy. So as you get into your header, your subheader and your body copy, you may think about using the same typeface and different variations of those. Here we can see the header using Avenir Next Heavy at a 48 point font, the subheader using 26 point font with the Avenir Next Demi Bold, and the body copy using 14 point with Avenir Next Regular. So there's a clear sense of hierarchy within not only the sizing here, but within the spacing that is being used between each sentence 
and the boldness within those um, different typefaces as well. So these are some references here to look at how we can apply that into the space itself. Here we can see different levels of hierarchy. And again, we're used to seeing this, but oftentimes this can be tricky to uh, use within our own designs when we're getting started. So don't be afraid to look at other references, see what they're doing, see how they are doing it successfully. And you can always model your own design after that as well. Here we can see some examples of a pull quote and how that might be placed outside of the copy with some uh, interesting sort of details here whether it is uh, calling out uh, something interesting about that article or something that might entice the reader. Oftentimes the pull quote is going to be text that is pulled from the actual body copy, but is isolating it to again, give the reader some sort of insight about that information. And again, when you are choosing typefaces, make sure to choose a typeface that is going to work well within the entire system and try to avoid typefaces that might have a negative connotation to them within the design industry. So going back to these basic four principles, we can utilize contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity within those multiple levels of hierarchy and the use of the grid. We are going to be working with two interior spreads of your magazine. So again, make sure to think about the first spread being some sort of introduction to that article, where the second spread is going to be, the viewer is already going to be invested into the article. So at that point, you do not need to create another headline or another introduction. You are just going to be continuing that into the second spread. So make sure to use the template that's provided in the module. You can create your own if you would like to as well. Begin to design your layout with placeholder frames and placeholder text based within the grid structure. Refer back to the page requirements to include all the necessary content for the project. And make sure to play cl pay close attention to your hierarchy and legibility of your content. Use paragraph and character styles to build out your file correctly and ensure consistency within your design. Once you have all of your design elements in place for your design, you can begin to edit the content and the images accordingly. Here we have an example of the cover that is using uh, some of these placeholder boxes and placeholder content. And now uh, looking at this spread here, this is actually based off the template provided in the module. So you can see that there is a header, which is titled change on master page, which clues you into that that is going to be edited on the master page, not your uh, working pages. We can see that each one of these has four, each page has four columns and five rows, and those are placed within the live area. Outside of the live area is where your uh, header and your folios are sitting within these margins. And we can see these clear gutters that are separating the columns and the rows as well. So we can see a quick example here of how, whoops, how you might go in and start to create these initial files based on the placeholder content and the placeholder text within the higher typographic hierarchy. So again, you do not need to use actual text here. You can use placeholder text for all of your, your content. I would suggest using real text for your, uh, at least your headline, potentially your intro as well. But uh, certainly you can use placeholder text for the bulk of your body copy and body subheaders, as well as any captions in the space. So we can see a large image here on the left-hand page that is bleeding all the way off the page. And we know that because it's going all the way to our bleed lines outside of the trim lines here. We have this large headline and intro, and that leads us into the uh, subheader text over here and our body copy. We have a pull quote within the space and we have a caption within the space here as well. And the image here is still being used within the grid spanning four different modules. And it's actually going all the way outside of that and bleeding outside of the page as well. So again, making sure that that runs all the way to your bleed lines. Now within the body copy here, we can see that this is spanning two different columns. And that is being separated by this gutter before it expands into the next column here, which is also utilizing two columns. The caption is only using one column. So that's again where it helps to use that narrow or condensed typeface. And then the pull quote is also using two columns, but spanning between those in the space. And that is then continued on to the second spread. 
So remember, your first spread is the introduction to the article. You're going to have some larger content introducing people. Then once they are already invested in the second spread, you can continue on with that. Here we have a large image that's actually spanning all the way through the first page into the second page, stopping before it goes into the third column. And we still are using two columns for our body text. We have our body subheaders inside the space, an additional pull quote, caption, and two images here as well. So please reach out if you have any questions in regard to this assignment. And that concludes the lecture for the Art 159 Magazine Layout Lecture.